Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 18. Uh, before we get into anything, we're going to go with Jeremy, who's going to tell us about the Bipcot license. Yes, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the Bipcot Nova license. This allows for reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about that at bipcot.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. Yes. Uh, so, so today we have Adrian, uh, who is a volunteerist, and she uh, most graciously designed and drew the Seeds of Liberty logo that we are all uh, enjoying today. <laughs> so we're going to be great. Um, thank you for her for doing that. Um, and if you want to reach, um, uh, contact Adrian for any anything that we mentioned today in the episode you can uh, talk to her on Facebook or through um, uh, Twitter at ZombiePan uh, is her Twitter uh, username so so today um, we'll discuss uh, some diversity you know how maybe our movement re needs more diversity maybe it's just uh, uh, some people say it's uh, what like uh, uh, single white uh, guys living in their mother's basement, right? Eating hot pockets, <laughs> stuff like that. <laughs> with, their, with, their, with their guy fox mask, ma. <laughs> Get to bed, ma. Somebody's wrong on the internet. <laughs> I, I, I I know that's where I am right now. I mean, so, uh, we'll, well, you can see the wood paneling behind me. I'm I, I'm obviously in my mom's basement at the moment. So. <laughs> I mean, I bought a house at 21, and I guess I'm a neck beard who lives in his mom's house. So whatever. <laughs> Well, at least you have a beard. So. <laughs> and it's my whole face. It's not just the neck. You know? Exactly, exactly. So there's too many stereotypes to, ba to, to bash. Uh, <laughs> so uh, before we get into all that, um, hope maybe Adrian can talk to us about how she became volunteers and the, you know, the path that she, uh, that she pursued that led her to today. Okay. So um, before I identified as staunchly liberal, so I'm kind of in your camp on that one. Um, <laughs> I had joined a gaming group on Facebook and ended up friending someone with a modified Guy Fox mask. And he messaged me basically saying, hey, um, yeah, I can tell from your page that you're liberal. Why did you friend me? And I'm like, because it was in this gaming group and I like what you said. And he's like, oh, OK, well. <laughs> I'm not. I'm like, well, as long as you're not like staunchly conservative, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be cool. I just like freedom. And he's like, oh, really? <laughs> Let me tell you some things. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the liberals, how they think they love freedom. Yeah. And it was uh, basically, I guess, putting up the bat signal. <laughs> uh -huh. And um, I've always been really open-minded about stuff. And I identified as liberal mainly because of social issues not necessarily because I felt like other people should be controlled by things, but more that I didn't think the government should be telling us what to do with our bodies and our families and who to love. So um, it was pretty easy to uh, convert me, I guess, because it wasn't much of a conversion. He's like, no, you're voluntarist. Here's why. And I'm like, oh, okay, sure. <laughs> That makes sense, because it did. It did make sense. And um, why I wanted to talk about the topic that I'm asking to talk about today is specifically because if you approach someone that you're trying to talk to about this sort of thing from a slightly different mindset, because like I, I noticed when I when I joined up with uh, when I joined the New Gateway Group, which is how we all met. Um, I'm not on there anymore because I don't really care. Um, but um, I'm still banished. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but the thing is, I met a lot of really good people and started talking with them more about ideas and stuff. But when I when I first went on there, I pretty much went as gender neutral as possible. Um, so like my icon was a video game character and granted a really handsome video game character so anybody who knew anything about the video game would have been like yeah this is totally a chick 
but <laughs> <laughs> I always thought you were a chick. You know, it was just a drawing of a handsome dude, so that could have been a, a guy. And the way I speak and present myself isn't really as one way or the other. Um, but I did it specifically in that group because there was a lot of anti-female and anti-feminism mindset. And I understand the anti-feminism, but the way it can be presented can come off as completely anti-female, which is gonna throw off a lot of people and make a lot of people think, hmm, you know, maybe these guys aren't cool to hang out with, which you really don't wanna, you know, come across like that because it's just gonna put people off of not only the movement, but off of actually voluntarism or, or anarchy or even libertarianism in general, if they're like, oh, well, you guys are just like, fuck everybody. I have mine. I just want guns and gold and to live in the woods by myself. And nobody else is going to be on to that, even though maybe that's your thing. And that's fine. You do your thing. But <laughs> if you want to get anybody who's like, oh, I don't know, living in a city with a bunch of other people, they, they want to know that the type of lifestyle that they currently live would not only be better, but supported by the type of things that we want to implement. And to do that, you've got to talk to people on their level first. Do you get me? Yeah, yeah, interesting, interesting points. Um, I hadn't realized that was the reason that you did that, actually. <laughs> um, but, uh, but yeah, that, that doesn't make a lot of sense though um, and it's kind of sad that you know um, I guess the, the idea of volunteerism for me is to accept you know everybody and anybody as long as there is no coercion or support for coercion right which includes right. government coercion because everybody understands you know I don't support theft, assault, rape and murder but then when you add government to that it's like oh wait well if they do it it's okay <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah yeah so that's basically the only criteria the way I see it so yeah it does, you know gender shouldn't matter gender right. you know <laughs> a lot of a lot of liberals actually will get behind that because on on my own page I I've, I've ended up posting several things that have caused huge discussions um, <laughs> which I was not anticipating at all so it's been kind of interesting watching um, my liberal friends and my anarchist friends basically go at it um, they just like, hate poor people we just hate poor people and women that's it <laughs> well it's but it's funny because at the end of the day on most of them the liberals have been like you know you're right that would be ideal if we could do that but as it is we're stuck and so that's where the conversation should start though right because the conversation shouldn't just be oh you're wrong because of this it's got to be not only oh wait a second no you are right but I just don't see how we can do that. Then you start saying, well, here's how mm -hmm. we move forward, you know? That's where the conversation starts. Yeah. But getting people to that point, you can't just go in their guns a blazing expecting them to be like, oh, you're right, because they're not. Not unless you fully understand where they're coming from as well. Yeah. I Oh, sorry, sorry. I was just gonna say, you know, I, I mean, I agree with that for the most part. Although I, I'm not, you know, I, I'm not somebody who has not gotten into that <laughs> mindset where I just like to pound people with stuff because um, I, I have done that and uh, I still do it every once in a while just for fun. But it's usually on the really heavily nationalistic pages and stuff like that on social media that, you know, just when I need to wrestle some Jimmys just for the heck of it. Um, but on the whole, I mean, obviously <laughs> the. the the more productive path is usually the one you were describing. Um, you know, I, I think you're correct. Um, it's funny you you, know, you mentioned about the how you um, kind of hid yourself when you first came into Gateway. I'm obviously one of the people that did fall for that at the beginning. Um, it wasn't until you became an admin that I realized, oh, wait a minute, you're a chick. <laughs> That's funny. It's um, funny. A lot of people actually come <laughs> to me, and then they, like, I have comments on the picture of me in a corset going, wait a second, you're a girl? <laughs> I'm like, oh my god, yes, yes I am, I'm sorry. 
<laughs> and they're like, no, I just, I didn't, I didn't uh, know. Yeah. And it also well, helps to have a gender neutral name, too. Like, if your name was Jennifer or Rebecca, yeah. <laughs> it's yeah. kind of difficult, and right? I, I can thank my mom for that. <laughs> well, I, I think funny, you have a pretty my dad name. Actually, wanted uh, <laughs> my dad didn't want me named Alexandria because he didn't want me having a boy's nickname. And I'm I, my joke always is, so he just gave me a boy's name instead. Because <laughs> <laughs> yeah. they took the boy's name and put an E on the end, and they're like, oh, there's your name. I'm like, okay. Cut, cut out the middle man. There's no there's no need for that. <laughs> exactly. Um. But yeah, I, um, you know, it's that the, I mean, that that type of group, the way it was then, and, and a lot of the other groups, you see it a lot, and and obviously there was surprise for a lot of people when they found out because the stereotype does tend to ring true a lot, at least in the circles I've traveled since I, you know, since I started my journey. It is heavily dominated by males, um, you know, usually the the white variety. Uh, so <laughs> we, 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 you know, not, not not like our show isn't very diverse or anything. You know, Vanilla is the closest thing we got to anything but pure white. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, it, it, unfortunately, that is the case, and I, I've often wondered that why there isn't more. But then you see the actions of some of the people, like the ones you're describing, and then you go, well, yeah, that's why. <laughs> why would they want to come anywhere near us? Because um, we can be assholes. Um, and some of us, some of us just do it for fun. Some of us are just like that all the time. Um, but that does come with the accepting thing that the Nello said that just accept everybody because you can still be an asshole and not initiate, you know, initiate aggression against anybody. But yeah, the tactics could be a little better for some people. But again, to each their own. I mean, we've discussed this, I think, briefly on one other episode where there's always, or at least a couple episodes actually, where there's everybody has their in. Everybody has their aha moment out there. They just need to find it where it clicks, where where the where the message of freedom, of actual freedom, and, and what liberty is supposed to, you know, just liberty to do whatever the hell you want as long as you don't mess with anybody else. What that actually means um, to get that through to people, it it, it 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 takes some work because you know most people will want it once they once they once they understand it. It's like, well, yeah, why why the heck wouldn't I want this? Um, but but there's 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 a certain thing for everybody, and I, I have said before, and I've come across these some of these people. They're not they're they're not obviously a, a even a very big minority, but there are people that the smack your head over, smack yourself over the head approach will work with. Um, so for some people that does work. I mean, I've actually had it happen before. I used to go out on you know trolling missions with a couple of guys from some of the more. Um, you know, they, you know, some of the brutalist groups and some of the people like that. Um, and uh, we would kind of play good troll, bad troll. And uh, they would go out with their aggressive tactics, and I would come in with the logic. And we actually we actually had people, you know, contact me later on, private message me and stuff, and want to talk to me about it. Because it does work occasionally. But on the whole, yeah, you need to... Right, but they wanted to talk to you about it because you came with the logic. Yeah, but still, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't, they knew, they figured out that I was with them, like, it was kind of, it became obvious at one point, because it was just so, like, <laughs> it was thrown out for a while, but, you know, it does work for some people, but on the whole, yes, yeah, so you need to, you need to find a little more subtle tactics to deal with people, it just gets frustrating sometimes, but, because some people are just so dense. <laughs> variety in messaging, so, yes. if you're going at someone who has a specific mindset, understanding what their mindset is is going to help you to communicate with them. So yeah, if you're going on brutalist boards, of course, be a brutal asshole. That's what they're for. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. I mean, you just I'm just saying understand your audience. So if you want to reach out to more females, if you want to reach out to people who are in minority communities, then you're going to have to think in just a little bit of their mindset. And if you can't, then talk to somebody who can and get them to come with you. Make, make a different kind of gang. <laughs> I, I think, um, I think uh, uh, here's where I kind of throw a whole curveball into this and, and say something that sounds blat blatantly misogynist, but it's really not. Um, <laughs> From you, Dave? No. The, no. The, the, problem, the, <laughs> large, the large problem on this one is is anarchists tend to, to bury themselves in ration and logic and not emotion. And emotion tends to appeal more to women than it does to men. 
I know that sounds misogynistic, but that's just how we're wired. Women need that emotion because they're the ones who <laughs> give life, and they're the... okay. Hang on a second. So it's only misogynistic <laughs> if you're saying that emotions are bad, which they are not, and if you can use them and understand them fully, then they're good. So misogynistic is more in the sense of women are bad because of this stereotype. So the fact that um, I'm actually fairly logical as a person, I understand that I have extreme emotions because I'm a chick and I have extreme emotions, but um, I can look at them and be like, I know what this is, I know how to use it. Um, a lot of people can't, but if you can approach them from their own emotional standpoint, then you can use logic within an emotional framework. No, no I, I'm not disagreeing with that that um, assertion at all. But what I'm okay. saying is, is when your entire basis of all your ration is off of, of emotion, which tends to be, I mean, uh, if you think about it, okay, if women never got the vote in this country, would Democrats ever win anything? Yeah, they would. Are you sure about that? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm sure. sure. Because Republicans play off of emotion just as much as Democrats. They play off of... Yeah. We're going to get into this bullshit. <laughs> no, no, no. Like, <laughs> the, that's a boy. That's all I'm saying. No, no. The, the point is, is the, the Democrat side is what more towards, you know, welfare, socialist, more socialist, not towards the military or anything, but more socialist towards uh, society and, and how it should operate and everything. That appeals more to women because when you tell someone, "Hey, we can take care of the poor," the bit, the the man's gonna say, "That lazy bum needs to go get a fucking job." The woman's gonna say, "Well, he's down on his luck," and now it's like, "Okay," and I mean, I've I've, I've heard this <laughs> argument a thousand well, okay. times when I used to be a hardcore Republican. So you're well, making an assumption about men in general. Two, yeah. not all women think these, like that. So again, these are why I use words like tend. These are why yeah. I use words like tend to, not always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's, that's still a generalization. <laughs> generalizations are okay as long as they're based in what we can see with our own eyes. Well, I, I don't know. I, I think I, I think I have to agree with Adrian here, Dave. I think you're a little off on that. Uh, okay, so the Democrats like, they would just use the minorities instead, like they've they've also done. It, 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 the politics is they, they use whatever they can. Minorities, uh, immigrants. Or... Yeah, I, I don't think it would matter. I think they'd still they'd still be you know because people would get you know if you want to talk the political game, people would still get fed up with what the Republicans do after a while once they you know yeah. once they do so. Once they do right. certain amount of damage and and, and the tyranny ratchets up enough, you know, and it'll keep. I, I will concede. Flying. I will concede that point. Yeah. I, I'm just saying that emotion, as far as the when you when you put up when you veil the ownership of other humans with emotion and all this feely dilly love shit, that's just happens to be it. it ridiculous and that's why I don't think women buy anarchism too much uh, um, it, there's no, not enough that's, feely that's dilly actually, love again, shit you're <laughs> making an assumption Most of this is an assumption that we can clearly see by the lack of female anarchist no the thing is no 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 you're wrong here listen to the words that are coming out of my mouth for a second okay. right? this I'm is not always... supposed to be a comedy you know that right <laughs> I don't care. Keep going. Okay, I know are anarchists, but none of them are in the movement. You want to know why? Because of shit like that. Yeah. It's so, <laughs> women that I've talked to have been like, "Hey, you know, I was looking at the thread, and I am an anarchist. I agree with everything you're saying, but I am not getting in there." Because they're going at each other like rabid weasels, and I just want no part of that. And I'm like, girl, I got you. It's fine. So <laughs> that's the reason why. Well, it's you know, like, men, we can't be wrong. You know, we can't stand to be wrong. So that's why we're more yeah, open to debate, I, I believe. That's a generalization, but I will have to agree with that. Okay. So generalizations aren't bad, necessarily. No. No, they tend not, to follow again, what we see with our own eyes. Am I wrong? Well, but the thing is, you have to see you have to see the things that you can't see. 
as well. Now, I know that sounds... <laughs> Are you Yoda? Think of this... <laughs> I'm going to use a trigger word for a hot second. Oh, God. <laughs> Danilo, the cover idea, your ears. The, the idea of privilege, because I know everybody's like, oh, boo, no white male privilege, blah, blah, blah. Privilege is based on the idea of what you cannot see. And that is why you can't see having it. Here's an example um, that I actually really, really enjoy. Think of it like this. How much is a loaf of bread? Do you know how much a loaf of bread is? I personally don't because I don't care. I go into the store and I buy whatever I feel like buying because I'm not super worried about money. Now, poor people know exactly how much a goddamn loaf of bread costs. You know why? Because they don't have any money. So they go in with exactly like five or ten dollars and they're like, okay, a loaf of bread is two dollars, the peanut butter is three dollars, and the jam is, okay, this one's on sale and I have coupons. I don't use coupons. I don't need to. But for the people who do, that's what they're looking at. They're looking at the shit that's on sale. They're looking at all of that stuff as opposed to this is what I want. They're seeing it based on cost. That is how privilege works. So if you're walking down the street, you're aware of the people around you in the sense of, I don't want to get attacked by somebody. But how often are you actually thinking that? How often are you looking at people in the eye or specifically avoiding looking them in the eye? Depends on the Can area. <laughs> on, the regu- on a regular basis. Can you count how many people you look in the eye on the way from the train station to your work or to a friend's I, 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 I'm weird. I look at pretty much everyone I see in the eye. <laughs> yeah, most people don't. I, I, yeah. But I'm, I'm hyper conversationalist. Yeah, we know you're an extrovert. It's fine. <laughs> but I'm sadly I not. I like watch anime for eight hours on my couch. <laughs> extrovert Extrovert means that you get energy from people and from being around other people oh yeah i do i enjoy it like like right now i'm I'm pretty excited because i'm getting to talk to you i'm getting to talk to jeremy and danilo and otherwise i'd be watching anime on my freaking (laughs) couch right now so so we're just one level above anime that's it well i'm on a splurge i'm on a splurge right now i I find something i watch it till it's done and like i was like i haven't watched anime in a while so i'm like watching uh, the shit out of it. I, I just okay. got done watching every episode of Friends, so <laughs> sadly. Stay on target. Stay on target, Dave. <laughs> well, ca- ca- caveats are what entertain people, you know. <laughs> Caveat? No, I, I think you mean tangent. But <laughs> <laughs> that's the spruced up is, name for tangent. My point is that the entire idea of privilege is based on what you can't see, and I, if, if I'm in New York and I hail a cab, a cab's gonna stop for me because I'm white. That's very Privilege simple. is subjective, but yeah, if you were in Nairobi, Kenya, you'd probably be shot but and raped. Exactly, so, <laughs> exactly. So, it, so let's, let's be honest here, it's all subjective. It doesn't about this whole idea of privilege and specifically the people who keep touting on privilege is that it's entirely subjective on where you are and who you are. So. Mm-hmm depending on where you are and who you are, you're going to be treated differently. But the idea that I'm putting forward with the idea of the the poor person versus the person who has money is that it's what you don't think about as opposed to what you do think about. So if I'm coming into a group and I see the kind of conversations happening, I chose to go gender neutral because I felt safer that way. And that's kind of not okay if you want to start bringing people in to a space. Granted, well, yeah. if you just want to make it goes it into what I was saying earlier, it's the fine. feels. That's fine. Do that. And it, but I mean, I'm just saying, like, I'm part. I'm part of some brutalist groups. I'm part of a group that basically our entire point is to put up the most offensive shit possible and then make. <laughs> and. Jeremy knows what I'm talking about. (laughs) And it's a really fun group of guys. But the thing is, that's what that group is for. It it doesn't matter to us because nothing that we're putting up is specifically against one type of person. So everybody's invited, you know. 
Um, it's just when you're talking about wanting to create a community that is bigger. Basically, if we want voluntarism, if we want anarchy to be a thing that people aren't, you know, basically saying, no, you you guys are those kids in the Guy Fox masks, you know, setting off uh, Molotov cocktails in Canada for no reason. Why the hell should we pay attention to you? We have to have more diversity and more types of people, you know, that can spread the message and can actually discuss things with others without, you know, pissing them the fuck off before getting the message across. It's the whole normal dude thing I've been trying to spread to people. It's like, I'm not some dude that wants to live out in the woods and if someone gets, steps on my property, I shoot them. <laughs> like, I'm just a normal dude who has found that, you know, maybe we shouldn't use violence in everything we do. Dave, right. stop being an extremist. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I have a few. Uh, okay, so I'm not going to make the generalization of all women because this is the topic. Like, why are women not as much in the anarchist movement, right? But mm -hmm. I'm going to say that my mother and my aunts, her sisters, and a couple of my friends <clears throat> that are socialists, well, yeah, Democrats and slash socialists, um, they have common... Um, questions and concerns, uh, such as like my my mother's big thing is, um, what if uh, a a river is poisoned? You know, what if the air is poisoned? What if a company is doing you know horrible things to the environment? Right. So obviously she's very concerned about the environment, right? Yeah. And then and then again, war and poverty, right? Welfare state. That's also a big concern. Her big concern is, what if. <laughs> Somebody, you know, uh, you know, mother, you know, single mother, and all these kids, and nobody supporting her. Who's going to help her, right? If the government's not there, so, so it it, it seems to me that um, a lot of these people that call themselves socialists, they aren't, they are, they are not socialists because they see the violence that is required to obtain those funds and obtain those quote free stuff, but all they see is that the government is supposedly helping a certain group of people, right? That's all they see. They just want to help people, right? So it's always about good intentions, right? And as we know, good intentions, uh, the road to hell is paved with good intentions, right? So fundamentally, economic ignorance is the road <laughs> to, to hell. And and that's that's unfortunate, right? Because that's um, that's not thinking with your brain. It's, that's I mean, I'm not saying emotion is bad, because <laughs> I am emotional, but thinking in terms of emotion regarding the welfare state, regarding, you know, um, socialism, is bad because you will get a lot of people hurt that way, right? A lot of people have been killed and murdered and mass murdered and all that kind of stuff in the past because of because of dictators coming to power on the platform of we will help the people with you know, help the poor, we're gonna raise our country's gonna be the envy of the world, right? And then, you know, millions of people get killed. So So, <laughs> so. I, think, I think with that and I, I totally get what you're saying because a lot of the people that I talk to um, from um, this standpoint have had those concerns. I've also had people um, concerned because I have a lot of artist friends because I, you know, have a degree in art. And a lot of their concerns has, has to do with, um, you know, the um, copyright and stuff like that. So basically the way that I have approached them is, is kind of the same. And it's coming from the idea of um, basically crowdfunding because um, for my artist friends and for people worried about um, copyright law I point out Patreon and Patreon is actually doing really really well for a lot of artists who put their work up for free online um, basically they're finding that people are supporting them like I, I support a ton of people on Patreon because I have extra funds and I enjoy watching other people's art and um, knowing that there are services like that I posit to them basically you know with things like that and with Kickstarter we don't have to worry anymore about you know the big record industry taking all the funds from uh, from artists without laws against it. And we don't have to worry about, 
uh, you know, people pirating things because if you can give it away for free because you're being paid on the regular anyway, you know, why should you worry about someone taking stuff and using it for a screensaver? You shouldn't because, you know, that's, it's not actually going to hurt you because you're still going to be making money. You're still going to be able to do what you love and, um, you know, take care of yourself and your family because people who appreciate your work are going to, you know, provide this for you. And that's the same, the same goes for charity. There's tons of GoFundMes and things like that when people get hurt and they don't have insurance or, you know, their car breaks down and they can't go to work. They put that up there and it goes viral and all of a sudden they have a new car. They have their car fixed. And the, 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 the like Charleston that, shooter had a Kickstarter that bailed him out. Yeah. And the thing is, <laughs> this world is fucked. <laughs> it's, it's what it's what the people want and so the way that you can approach the people that are that are socialist or that feel that the government should take care of uh, those that aren't as well off is you tell them look you want to help people how many other people do you think there are that want to help people probably a lot and with services like this um basically it's very, very easy for someone to set up a program and get, get funded just through being social with other people. Um, granted, it's, it's some work, but most of the people that I know who need help like that would much, much rather make money off of doing work than just sitting around. And so, I'm telling them, you know, find what it is that you like to do. Like if you, if you can knit, knit things, we'll buy them, you know, just anybody making even the smallest effort to help somebody else out will, you know, get a benefit from that. It's, it's just explaining to them that it doesn't have to be mandated because why should it be? It shouldn't. Kindness should be mandated <laughs> by law. Well, yeah, that's what they're doing in uh, England. You know, they ban like all these words. You can't use these words in the office place. We'll put you in jail if you do. Like, uh, what was one of it was ridiculous. Um, uh, that's mighty wide of you. You can't say that in England. <laughs> you go to jail. <laughs> it's a hate crime. Hate speech is a hate crime. <laughs> Well, um, I think Adrian uh, just disappeared. No, I, I, th I, I see her. Um, I was just going to say that uh, actually, that's for some reason that's never crossed my mind that connection that you made there. And, and now that you now that I hear you say it out loud, it, it seems blatantly obvious, and I want to smack myself for not thinking of it before um, about the crowd crowdfunding as charity because when I talk to people or when I have talked to people, you know, and, and the inevitable comes up. Um, no matter who it is, whatever their pet cause is that they say, oh, we can't, we have to have government for this. You know, it won't, we won't survive, we, we won't survive without um, government because it, it needs it for this. You know, I, I, the common line is always, well, yeah, private charities would make a comeback. Um, but I hadn't even considered me using stuff like Patreon and um, uh, what you call Kickstarter or any of those for the same exact purposes. Like, that's, it's funny, like that. That's obviously you know the 21st century version of charity, I guess. Uh, but I can't believe I never thought of that. That's, that's kind of that's 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 so simple and so brilliant all at the same time. But you're right. That, that it, it is though. You're right. That's that. That's actually. I'm, I'm Jeremy, actually going to try to use that. What's that? Jeremy, you know? Jeremy well, welcome to the 21st century. <laughs> well, Dave, Dave has labeled me a luddite on more than one occasion, so uh, I, I guess I have that come to me. Even outside of that, the the best charity organizations I've found have been very small and niche, like um, one that I like to tout about because I actually helped out with them when I was in middle school was uh, called Hesed House. And they are, um, I think they're like a church-based charity, but what they do is they have like a kind of almost an apartment building that they have homeless people come in and they can set up, they set them up with new clothes and then
they can buy groceries and stuff to start. And the only thing that they need to do is they have to start looking for a job because they've been given new clothes and they've been given cleaning supplies. So they have to keep their apartment clean and they have to go looking for a job. And they let them live there while looking for work and then once they find work until they have enough money to actually move out and get their own apartment and this is something that i think could catch on in multiple places as um a charity that i'm kind of surprised hasn't been done more because it's not it's not necessary i guess one of the things is a lot of people get really pissed off at at charity for just giving things away. And the thing about that is that doesn't work. You can't just throw money at issues and expect them to, to be solved. And the reason why Hesed House works is because they ask very little from the people that they're, they're bringing in. But the fact that they're asking something from them means that they have to be committed to finding a job and they have to be, um, you know, together enough to keep their apartment clean. Which again, those two things seem very simple, but if anybody comes in and is like, oh, hell no, I don't want to do that. They're like, all right, bye. We don't need to have you here because we're providing this for people who really want to get their life back on track. So you kind of avoid that argument of, well, they're just going to use this and buy drugs and, and shit like that because they're not providing money. They're providing a space, they're providing clothes, and they're providing food. So it's a perfect living arrangement. What? No and... Bitcoin? Huh? Nothing. <laughs> I said, what? No Bitcoin? <clears throat> Um, no, not not yet. Maybe I'll offer that in the future. Maybe you can start a charity that'll do that. Don't donate hit donate Bitcoin to hobos who don't have technology to use it. Got it. Actually, I think there's a there's a cryptocurrency called Hobo Coin. I think, right? <laughs> or yeah, I'm pretty sure. Hobo. I, I, I hobo not, Coin. Yeah. I am not well versed enough in the crypto world to know that. I, I remember um, saying that. <laughs> well, actually, Adrian, I I think um, I think it's short for Hoboken. There's, there's something actually similar. There's a church that does something similar up here in Long Island um, by me, although they focus more on um, teenage uh, troubled youth. Uh, you know, boy, you know, mostly boys. Um, I may or may not have passed through there at one point in my life, um, but it's the same. But it's the same basic premise where they they put they give you a place to live, they give you food, and they but they don't give you any money, and they get and they actually to start out sometimes they will allow you to work around you know do grounds work or do something around the um, around the, uh, the the unit or the, the the little sprawling thing they have out there, um, and but the whole thing is you have to go out and look for work and you have to go out and do things, and they'll put up with because it because it's a church run business. Um, they will they'll give you a little extra leeway at the beginning and they'll let you hang yourself pretty much. But if you keep you know if you keep messing up and not doing your not doing your chores around because you also have to do chores around the around the, around you know the communal areas and stuff like that. Um, just anything you do to keep yourself busy while you're not looking for work and you have to prove yourself. And after you know a month or so, if you're not holding up your end of the bargain, then you're out the door and then they let somebody else who will possibly um, put more effort into it have it have an opportunity. Um, which is great, but I think you're right. There's not, it, it's, it's, I guess it's surprising that they haven't took off, but also not based on the situation that we are all in as a whole, because with the, with the status paradigm, you know, the chat, even the charity industries are regulated, you know, they, they, they keep an eye on all that. And a lot of people, whether they are, are, are understanding enough to realize that their gov their money is being wasted by giving it to government, um, or they think it's actually going to help. Well, a lot of a lot of both sets of those people also believe that. Well, I'm already giving money towards this, so why would I give extra? So that's why these things don't unfortunately yeah. take off. And then government's with the taking care of it. <laughs> well, exactly, but but also and with the, the with the never does it just gives enough to basically make people think that they're okay, but they're not. And of course. 
people that I know who are like disabled and um, you know on uh, SSI and SSRI, they they can barely get by, like just barely, and it's it's to the point where like they have to have food stamps, and they're like, I don't know if I can afford to eat this month, so I'm literally living off of ramen and hoping that I don't die of cholesterol issues because of all the sodium. And um, because of the way the government works with taxation as well, you've got the situation where um, there are people working like really low end jobs that if they get a promotion, they will be making more than they should for getting welfare. But if they get off the welfare, then they're completely fucked. So mm -hmm. they will not take a promotion at work specifically so they don't get fucked over by that, which if they weren't taxed at all, it wouldn't be an issue. <laughs> so it's, it's one of those things where you have to look at it from their perspective in that way. So you're like, hang on a second. Think about if you weren't taxed at all, would you have that issue? And most of them would say, wait, so 30% of my paycheck wouldn't disappear? Then I wouldn't need that extra kick from the government because I would still have that available to me. What is it? What is it? Government breaks breaks your leg and sells you the crutch yeah. and tells you and says, hey, you know, we helped you out. Yeah, break break your leg. Yeah, break your leg. Gives you a wheelchair. And says, see, you wouldn't get get around without us. How would you get around? <laughs> um, but yeah, that's uh, uh, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of people they like um, like you're right. They they look to the government for help, right? And and so that's what people see. They see the government allocating resources here and there, and they say, you know what? That's a great thing. Look at that. It's a government service that you know everyone's people are benefiting from. But again, people do not see the the gun. You know, you don't see the coercion, the force, the violence that's in the background that, you know, as you said, Adrian, this is what you don't see, right? It's the unseen, the unseen force that many people um, are not aware of or maybe are uh, intentionally ignorant of. And, and when you do bring it up, when you say, actually, government is forced, they're like, they get defensive and they get um, angry and emotional. And then they put up those barriers that, uh, as you know, you know, once they put them up, then it's like, no, no. You know, getting through to them. And I think that if, if, if we came from more of a, of less of a fuck you, stop taking my stuff standpoint, and more of a, hey, let's all look at this from how would we be better as a community if we took care of each other and the government stopped taking all of our stuff? You know, it, it, it's, it's more just being more... <laughs> Exclusive as opposed to not being exclusive, if that makes sense. And yeah. what do you say to people when they, when they tell you, but you're being utopian, Adrian? Heck, what do you mean, the government not taking our stuff? If the government didn't tax us, they wouldn't exist. We... <laughs> then I tell them that we don't need a government, and then they say, well, you know, what about what about the the fire uh, the fire department and the police department and then they argue that, you know, the privatization of those won't work because then poor people won't get it. And I'm like, well, actually, it, it will work because poor people will get it because you'd be paying for the cities altogether instead of having the government take from you. So it would be more on a sliding scale of what you could pay for the same service. So if someone's making millions of dollars, yeah, they pay more, but they get the same service. So, you know. Yeah, people want those things. They they want security and they want fire protection and they want flood protection and tornado protection and all this other shit. This that's that's a market that is monopolized by government. And, and something yeah. interesting. Um, God, I want to say Aubrey pointed this out or something, but basically, if insurance companies ran those type of things, it would work really well because they would actually save money by disasters not happening to people because putting a fire out and fixing fire damage costs way less than letting a house burn down if you think about it so yeah, it would so be their best interest to not have that happen in fact it would be 
well, well within their interest to not have that. Uh-huh. Same with anything that you would need the police for. So, like, two dudes are fighting. One of them could kill each other. Let's call the security service and have them break it up because somebody paying out death benefits is going to cost way more than them going to the doctor for, you know, a broken nose. So I say, let them duke it out. <laughs> but I'm but, no, anyways, I want to kind of shift gears here. Uh, how do you think we can appeal more to women uh, in the voluntarist, uh, the abolitionist, the, the anarchist, the, the Liberty movement, if you want to put a label on it, the, uh, to me, it just, I don't know exactly how to correctly convey that, emo- it's such a, it's hard to explain, but how, how would, how would you maybe help us see it from a woman's eye? Uh, okay. How would so, you like to be exactly talked to, like if you were just a full-blown statist, what would work best on you and what uh, we already heard what w- did work best on you but could you either go into more detail about that or could yeah. you say maybe give yeah, us some so tips about what you've I done think, i think because and and this is this is nothing necessarily against any of you guys but um because a lot of you guys come from a conservative side from a libertarian side don't you can come across as still conservative and for most women, that's like a red flag, especially when it comes to things like abortion and, um, and gay rights and things like that. So coming... Rights or legal fiction. <laughs> Sorry. Well, coming from the standpoint of everyone should be free to do with themselves and with each other what they feel is right as long as it's consensual, then that's that's different because i know i know actually a lot of the people i've talked to have been very uh almost pro-life in their standpoint on abortion and saying like you know it's murder and therefore violates the nap and it's like yeah but no i'm sorry that's not really how it works well my, my stance just to ra- in a nutshell on abortion is is i'm not a woman i can't have one so i sh- i really don't have an opinion on it if if my girlfriend said she wanted to have an abortion, I would disassociate from her. But that's just me. I'm doing with my body, and I'm associating with who I want. Right. So if, and, if and, a woman and, wants to have an abortion, if if society or the, the, the community around her finds that acceptable, then she won't be ostracized. And there's always these nightmare cases where a woman gets raped and gets pregnant. You know, it's like, oh, well, we're just adding more emotional stuff to it, yet yeah, incest. That's more like it is a violation of the NAP, but where am I as a man to tell a woman what she can and can't do with her body? So unless like I get a girl pregnant and she's like in a coma, gets in a car wreck and is in a coma, I'm not going to abort the baby because I can't make that decision for the woman and the child. But, you know, so it's this, it's this, this weird thing. And I've always had this position on abortion as well. It's like I'm a man. I can't have an abortion and right now in current technology. So what the fuck does my opinion matter on the subject? Right. But a lot of people think that their opinions do matter. And by being aggressive about that, they end up um, turning a lot of people off on, on that particular subject. And um, like, I, I, I know people who have been raped and although I can't say for sure what I would do in that situation. Um, I would not have blamed them if they had chosen to get an abortion. Uh, My friend, I I have a friend who did, and she did not. She ended up uh, putting the baby up for adoption. But it's one of those things where you can't just tell someone that they're wrong for having an opinion. And just because I would not personally do that doesn't necessarily mean that I would ever judge someone else for making that choice. Because you don't know what's going on in their head. And that idea of we're voluntarists and we say, as long as you're not hurting anybody else, you can do as you please, 
um, that specific thing comes up a lot. Like in the group, everybody's like, no, this violates CNAP, it shouldn't be allowed. And it's like, one, you can't ban shit because banning shit isn't anarchic. And two, banning shit doesn't make it go away. It just makes it dangerous <laughs> and terrible for everyone. <laughs> no, you're, you're definitely right on that. Let's yeah. ban all the things. Well, How did I, the I, banning rape and murder work out for you? Not <laughs> super great. And drugs? Let's talk about drugs. So, right. yeah, it, it, it's one of those things where you have to understand that if you if you approach females in a group or in, in a discussion just from the standpoint of, oh, hey, you're a human, maybe you'd like freedom, you'd probably convert a lot more than coming at them with, stop being so illogical, you damn woman. That's my, <laughs> I'm going to start using your line from now on. Hey, you're a human. Let me tell you about freedom. <laughs> the problem that I had is that I was being approached as a woman, not as a person. And I'm not a walking pair of tits. I'm sorry. I'm just not. I Neither am I. Neither I, am I. You know this? Did you ever do stand-up comedy? <laughs> <laughs> so, so, uh, so, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap up. Uh, so I guess we'll, we'll all give our closing remarks. Um, but I just wanted to uh, mention, like Dave said, you know, how, how to talk to women, right? Because I... And with my kids, uh, we go out, you know, because I'm, I'm homeschooling my kids, five-year-old and a three-year-old, we go out to various places, meet up with other homeschooling families, and I am most of the time the only father, right? <laughs> I meet up with a lot of women and their kids. So I talk to a lot of women. And, uh, and I've yeah, gotten to pre pretty good... <laughs> I've gotten into pretty, pretty good conversations with them. Um, you know, they're not anarchists, but they really understand, you know, the public school system and why it sucks. Yeah. And so that's a good starting point and to introduce them to everything else, right? So so that's what I start with with most of these most of these women is uh you know talking about public school and how monopolies, you know, why why monopolies don't work. You know, coercive monopolies don't work. And then, you know, why is it public school failing? It's not just because of common core. <laughs> it's not just, you know, because some teachers are incompetent. No, it's the institution of a monopoly, you know, and just as it works in any monopoly, it just, uh, you know, stifles competition and destroys the incentive to excel, right, to improve. So, so that's kind of the standpoint I come. And, uh, yeah, I don't necessarily talk to them as, you know, walking tits either. <laughs> I, but I do talk to them um, as, you know, having the common ground of having kids. And so maybe... Maybe for that reason, they're more, um, you know, uh, com comforted around me because, you know, they say, oh, we got this common ground, we got kids, so, you know, they, so they see me. And, so. and it's just every, every interaction that you're, that you're like, oh, how do I talk to this person? You find the thing that, that is in common with them. Try to look at how they think of, of, of life and be like, oh, okay, I get that. Let's talk about how that could be better if we weren't being stolen from. You know. <laughs> yeah, you nailed it. <laughs> well, uh, I, I just want to say, first of all, that you know, I, I really appreciate you coming on tonight, Adrian. Um, this was a, a, a very entertaining and educational conversation, uh, so mm -hmm. I really appreciate it. Uh, I, I think uh, we may have to have you on sometime again, uh, maybe to further talk about the abortion issue here, because just because we started to get into it, I actually uh, wanted to say something, but I was. I, just, I looked at the time and I was like, yeah, this is going to go on forever. So uh, I think yeah, uh, I, think uh, um, I, I will, I will just say, I, I will just say, I, I mean, I do agree with, I mean, not, not to get into it too much, but I mean, I obviously, <laughs> look at it, well, cause both of you, both of you guys, Dave and, and uh, Danilo said it too. I mean, I look at it as, as a nap issue too, but anybody who says it's a nap issue and therefore it should be banned doesn't understand the principles they're, they're supposedly espousing because no, correct. I, per, personally, I mean, I'm somebody back in the day who was a, a party to an abortion and it's something that still haunts me to this day and I've changed my mindset on it since, but I also don't believe that I have the right to tell anybody else what to do. Like Dave said, it, it would, and he made the joke, he made the mention about what happened, what would happen with his girlfriend, but you know, I may choose to disassociate with people because of it, but it's not going to, I'm not going to ban.
ban it because you're absolutely right. All that does, banning anything, all that ever does is bring what they call the black market, but is actually mostly a free market um, to light. But because of the laws that, that protect everything else, then it becomes a very dangerous situation. So yeah, banning just never works. You know, it's not for me, but I'm not going to tell anybody else. Uh, and actually, a final point on that is that if you are actually interested in um, kind of a background on the history of it, um, A Case of Need is a, a, it's a murder mystery written by Michael Crichton under a pseudonym, basically about back alley abortion and how it used to murder women. Mm -hmm. And um, it, it kind of put me in the mindset of, of why it's important for us to have the right, but at the same time, because of the way I feel about it, I think it's more important that we educate people on how to not get pregnant in the first place if you really don't want to be pregnant. Um, however, uh, again, another show, I would be happy to come on again if you guys want, because this has been fun. Awesome. So uh, I guess I'm going to say some stuff and then we can, we can say our goodbyes. Um, say, some, that, Dave. Um, say some stuff to, to put it mildly. Yeah, yeah say some okay. stuff. So, so yeah, like I really, really, really appreciate you coming on. This has been fun. Um, I think that we definitely have to, like you were saying earlier, and I've been trying to work this in more when I'm talking to people about this uh, – the, these things is 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 finding what re I'll, I'll ask them what do you really hate about government like what's the thing that, that drives you nuts about them <laughs> and when they say oh it's the uh you know it's the wars or or whatever and, and then i just i break that down all the way to first principles through the socratic method and then that gets them more into the question mode that gets them into the that 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 sweet nectar of the gods the question mode faster than uh, them getting all huffy puffy and saying you just hate poor people and walking away, or you're wait you're an anarchist you're crazy I'm out so mm -hmm. it's like uh, I do agree but we have to find out how to um, appeal uh, uh, I hate to use it a fallacy here but appeal to certain people's emotions uh, because we are emotional people we we're human beings we're we're animals you know uh, uh, you not know. according to my wife I'm not. <laughs> so, so I think I think the more in with uh, you know with with humans is it, not to subdivide and everything is just humans is to push more to find out and connect with them, and you know I've been really taking a big hands off approach on talking to people and it's been working way better than anything because if you listen a few episodes ago we did the backfire effect and I'm learning that. If you're trying to talk to someone about what they truly believe in their heart to be fact, they're not going to change their mind uh, by your words. They're only going to change their mind for themselves. At the end, we are the ultimate authority in our life. We choose what we believe, you know. So uh, I really appreciate you coming on, and uh, that's about all I have to say about the thing. All right. Well, thanks for having me, guys. Yes, thanks for coming on, Adrian. So, um so just to run through real quick, if anybody wants to contact us, they can see us on Facebook, Twitter, um, and, and YouTube, and all on the, the seeds of liberty dot com. Uh, so, uh, so yeah. So if you want to send some uh, some Bitcoin, some uh, uh, do do we get the Patreon account up yet, Dave? It's up, but we we got we still have to do some stuff with it. Um, we also got a a, a shop on um, Teespring now uh, for like four or five shirts I made. Uh, I'll put that in the show notes as well if you want to look at some of our shirts. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so again, thanks a lot, Adrian, for coming on and also for uh, designing our logo. Uh, he, and uh, Dave's been trying to convince us that it's not a silhouette of him, but I, <laughs> I, I beg, I beg to differ. I beg to differ. So, uh, <laughs> it'll never be settled. So, uh, awesome show. Thank you very much for coming on, and thanks for listening. This is the the seeds of uh, this is the seeds of liberty podcast. <laughs> Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Bye.